Okay, guys, my name is Joshua Kersey, and I'll talk to you a little bit about the Ashcan School of Art. But before we talk about that, let's talk about the American art scene before Robert Henry. The American art scene was dominated by American Impressionism, which focused on very upper class subject matter. So we have upper class individuals doing upper class things in very picturesque settings. Academic realism was a hyper realistic style that focused on refinement of technique and was commonly used in commercial art. Here we have an example of American Impressionism. This is Mrs. Chase in Prospect Park by William Merritt Chase in 1886. Here we see the very strong impressionistic style. So on, on the outside, you have a lot of broad brushstrokes. And on the inside, you have an upper class woman doing an upper class thing. Once again, we have, a, we have Preparing for the Matinee by Edmund Hames Tarbell. And this a little bit less impressionistic. However, we still have a, a very upper class subject matter as a woman is getting ready for the matinee. This would be an example of American realism. This is The Stonebreakers by Gustave Courbet. And as you can see, there's a heavy emphasis on it being very true to real life. So you've got very realistic colors, shades, um, realistic figures and realistic poses. And yeah, this would be the kind of thing that you would see on advertisements in that time. Here we have another example, which is Long Branch, New Jersey by Winslow Homer. Once again, we have upper class individuals doing upper class activities. Who is Robert Henry? Robert Henry was a founder of the Ashken School. He was born Henry Cozad, Hen Robert Henry Cozad in Cincinnati, Ohio, and he enrolled in the Pennsylvania Academy of Fine Arts in Philadelphia in 1886. Around that time, he also enrolled in the Académie Julian in Paris, France in 1889 to study academic realism. So he has a background, has a very, a very technical background. He was also admitted to this prestigious French school, whose name I will not try to pronounce, but his true home was in New York, and he moved to New York City in 1900. The elements of the Ashcan style involved a sketch-like technique, which emphasized first impressions and the immediacy of experience, rather than refined outward appearances, like the academic realists. And the Ashcan artists, instead of the upper-class subject matter, they chose to focus on scenes of immigrant and working class life in New York City. Here we have a couple examples. So on the left is Portrait of Willie Gee, and on the right we have Snow in New York, both of these by Robert Henry. On the left you can see the portrait of the young boy. There's a, a great amount of detail on his face, so he still, he still has that, the technical expertise, but on the outside, just like the Impressionist style, you have a lot of broad brush strokes and a lot of dark colors. And the same can be said for snow in New York, which you can't, you can't make out much more than the shapes of individuals and the shape of a horse and a cart. However, it gives you a great feel for what it would be like to be on the streets of New York in 1902. Robert Henry eventually took on some students as well. In 1892, he took on his first generation, all of whom were newspaper illustrators in New York. And that's important because the Ashcan style borrowed heavily from the, the sketchy quality of newspaper illustrations. They included William James Glackens, George Lux, Everett Shin, and John Sloan. And by 1904, Robert Henry and his students, they had all moved to New York City. Here we have an example of William James Glackens' work. This is Central Park Winter in 1905. Broad brushstrokes, a very impressionistic scene, although perhaps a little bit more detail in the foreground than you would normally otherwise see. This is a great one by George Lux called Allen Street and from 1905, and here we have a lovely scene of, of, uh, of market life in the city. And uh, you know, this would, be, this would be a lower class setting, this would be an immigrant setting. You wouldn't see many lords or ladies going through this area. Here we have a very, a very impressionistic style from Everett Shin called Central Park Winter from 1905. Once again, we have that dark, gritty, impressionistic feeling um, as you see in the background, there's the, the outlines of the buildings aren't even very clearly defined. Um, but it sure as heck gives you the feel of what it would be like to be there in Central Park in winter. This is one of the more famous ones from the Ashcan movement. This is McSorley's Bar from 1912. Once again, we have lower, uh, a lower class bar with lower class individuals probably having a drink after work. It's a, uh, a scene that's 
intended to be true to real life, as the realists would uh, would emphasize. So later, Henry took on Robert Henry took on a few other students. Um, here it says that he took on another three students, and that's because George Bellows was not included in the eight, and the eight would be Robert Henry, the top three students that you see here, um, and the previous four students who worked together with Fifth Avenue dealer William, William Macbeth to put on their first major exp exhibition called The Eight at the Macbeth Gallery in New York. George Bellows, unfortunately, was not, his art was not featured in this exhibition. Here's an example from Arthur Davies. All right, let me go ahead and tell you the names. It was Arthur Davies, Ernest Lawson, Maurice Prendergast, and George Bellows. And Arthur Davies painted this one. As you, you may see that the, his second wave of students, they have a, a bit different feel than, than the original three, the original four. This is Many Waters, uh, made in 1905. Here we have Ernest Lawson's The Red Mill from 1916. This is far more bright than a lot of the other ones, but you still have that very strong impressionistic style and uh, not exactly an upper class subject matter. Here we have an even more impressionistic painting called The Lighthouse at St. Malo from 1907 by Maurice Prendergast. And this, unfortunately, was not at the, uh, the, the eight exhibition. This is George Bellows, both members of this club, and this is probably my favorite of the uh, Ashcan School artist paintings. Very dark, very gritty, very underclass. You would not see... You would not see any lords and ladies amongst the audience here. This is, a, this is definitely lower class entertainment and uh, it looks fun. However, you know, what was once new can become old and the Ashcan School of Art entered the scene as a countercultural movement that rejected the formal approach of the dominant modes of art that preceded it. By 1913, however, the Ashcan School lost its avant-garde status with the appearance of the Armory Show and European modernists and cubists. The realist style of Ashcan art was actually very mild in comparison, and the modernists and cubists included Pablo Picasso, Henry Medice, and Marcel Duchamp. And here we have a few a few examples of their work. On the left, you have Les Demoiselles d'Avignon by Picasso. In the middle, you have The Open Window by Medice. And on the right, you have New Descending a Staircase by Duchamp. As you can see, these are, this is a very different style of art. It doesn't contain that, that quite sketchy quality. It's, it has that, that cubist feeling to it. And uh, I'll be honest, I'm not the biggest fan. Um, but you can see how amongst the posh art scene that this would be considered more revolutionary. And it actually made the... Uh, made the Ashcan artists look rather dull by comparison. So here we have it. That's the Ashcan school.